down by yeah. the riverside. <laughs> um, also cool for you guys who want to record just, you know, remotely from everywhere you want. It seems very legit. Definitely. And it's cheap. Yeah, it's cheap. Yeah. I, I was really surprised to see that too. Plus, as we meet like once a month, Jean and I, uh, to record, this would really give us the opportunity for me, me not biking down to Nippus every time. <laughs> uh, we can we can work remotely but, now. That but, but, you're both, but you're both in Cologne? Yeah, we're both okay. based in Cologne. Yeah. Um, Jean is there with his family in Nippes, and I'm in Ehrenfeld, so every time I, I bike down to his place and we record it, this gives us completely new opportunities to do this uh yeah mm -hmm. remotely as well mm -hmm. did you guys lose me because <clears throat> i can't see no, you you're guys. Bad. no yeah here. I, I can't see you either uh your video has been disabled due to internet quality issues Ooh. oh that's there what it says yep yeah it's like a little pop-up here in my screen i do see you though however i can still hear you i think it's fine Right. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I see you too, so. Hey. With your glass of milk. Hey. <laughs> yeah, milk and cookies. Milk. Some milk. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Jean, do you just, uh, shall we just get started? You Absolutely. Go ahead with your little intro and then um, I'll just take over and introduce Luca and then we just basically talk about, Luca, I sent you an email a couple weeks ago where I asked you about your um, um, your music influences and, and the most important um, yeah, styles that make you who me, you are today. Let me, let me recheck. <laughs> yeah, I did, I did that too. Let I did me that actually too. recheck. Um, I did apparently, but uh, um, let me see. And then... Yeah, we'll just go along and have a really just smooth, natural yeah. talk and chat and exchange mm -hmm. and yeah. Okay, I'm just um. Let me just dive into the email what I wrote you just to be sure. Um, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, of course. I was gonna, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. So, Jean, yeah. for you, just as a basic information, I did. I don't know if I forwarded you the email. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I um, asked Luca for his biography, where we weren't sure that we would actually do a live interview like this. So, um, yeah, we're just going to talk basically where he comes from, uh, where his um, inspiration comes from, and then uh, what else is there? Yeah, music inspiration, then about the inspiration for the uh, recent album. Mm -hmm. um, and we can talk about different singles or whatever just pops up in our minds. I really just don't want to give it a, a set yeah. frame. I uh, just want to have it as natural as usual, mm -hmm. let's say. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Do you know? Hit it. Welcome to the Pullover. Wait. <clears throat> Welcome to the Pullover Rivers radio <laughs> program here on 674 FM and on YouTube sometimes. Herzlich willkommen beim Pullover Rivers Radio Programm äh, auf 674 FM und auch auf YouTube hört ihr den Interview-Ausschnitt leider ohne Musik, da wir aus rechtlichen Gründen mit YouTube immer mehr Probleme bekommen haben und deswegen nur noch die äh, Talk-Sessions auf YouTube sind und den Rest könnt ihr auf Gene Pools äh, Website hören und auf 674 FM natürlich uh, die Musik und live. And uh, we have a special guest today. We actually celebrate our one year anniversary today. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And um, we decided <laughs> we decided to finally uh, have a route and a concept that we want to follow, which is uh, introducing independent artists, uh, people that we celebrate in terms of music and as people in general that we want to feature and that we want to push. And today we have a very special guest. Uh, his name is Luca Musto. Very warm welcome from our side, Luca. Nice to have you here. Thanks. Cheers. Yay. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. So, well, maybe I'm going to um, just give a little introduction of how we met and how um, this constellation um, yeah, was created. So I met Luca, I think two years ago, 
at a birthday party of a friend of ours uh, where we just hung out and, and got to know each other. Um, and after that, actually, uh, I only got to know your music, so I got to know you first as a person and then as an yeah, artist, nice. <laughs> um, which, is, which is always a great um, way of, of getting to know somebody, I think. Mm -hmm. um, And yeah, I already talked about you briefly in the last episode because I am a huge yeah. fan of your music, a huge fan yeah. of your productions and of, of your style. And um, maybe you'd like to just, um, yeah, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about what you're doing, what, uh, where you're based. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, so um, I'm Luca, you know, Italian dude living in Berlin, doing this thing in Berlin um, ever since five years now. Um, originally from the south of Germany, so I'm Italian, born in, in Germany though, so um, like a mix of a couple of influences. So um, yeah, anyway, I'm making music ever since um, I'm 16, so 2007, I started pretty much with doing hip hop and I uh, had a very long hip hop period, having like own record label, um, recording several kinds of hip hop, soul, but also rock artists and bands and produced them for quite long time and actually got into DJing quite later around 2012 2013 something like that and uh, I had like several DJ duos and projects where I like just uh, you know put out records uh, we pressed vinyl back then also so um, it's pretty much where I came into electronic music at a certain point because I got like Yeah, a little bit sick of hip hop to that time, I need to say, because like right now hip hop is amazing again, at least for me. Uh, but um, yeah, back in the time, I was a bit pissed off by the whole genre and the whole competition thing, especially in Germany. It's been a bit weird. So I changed directions a bit and I went into different styles and yeah, just kept on producing and eventually came up with my solo project kind of around six years ago. And um, yeah, producing down tempo now with a mixture of hip hop and rap into it as well, and always keeping it rough, straight, but still soulful in my own way, I would say, with a lot of influences. Mm. Definitely, definitely. Um, I think it's really funny because uh, I think you and I, we have a couple of, of things that we um, both share. Yeah. <laughs> um, the double nationality yeah. thingy. Uh, I'm half French, half German. You're half yeah. Italian, half German. I'm from the s south of Germany, too. True. We uh, checked that last time we yeah. spoke. <laughs> so that's really that's cool. Double um, do you? No. Are you half German as well? I just already? have eight nationalities. I need to say I just have an Italian passport, by the way. You know, I'm not. I'm, I'm like fully Italian. Like I just oh, dropped out you? to this world, to this planet, when my mother just crossed the border later on. So, uh, you know, um, I'm Italian fully, but anyway, yeah. Cool. Well, but we all have several yes. cultures, yeah, yeah. I guess, that sure. we. Uh, and I grew up in, in Germany, and I mean, actually, and South Germany is a very nice place to grow up. To be honest, uh, very greeny, and uh, you know, the mountains were close, and you know it, you know, it, right? So it's it's very very chilled. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Okay, I have yeah. So many okay. Go first ahead. off, so you're from Italy. How much time <laughs> did you spend in Italy before you went to the south of Germany? I actually haven't spent too much time there, just like in my childhood, maybe a couple of months in a row for a couple of years. But like most of my times I've been in, in Germany. I've been living in Germany and I grew up in Germany since I was born here. So So you have both parents in the house. Are they both working jobs in Germany? They they are both working jobs in a, in an Italian restaurant. Oh, yeah. Nice. As cliche as possible. <laughs> they came to Germany in the very big wave of, um, you know, in the late 80s where a lot of people were searched for all kinds of jobs. And my parents just opened up a, up a restaurant here because my, my uncle did as well. And so coming from a family of restaurant owners. And so, yeah. So what was <laughs> the, That's amazing. Yeah. What's that restaurant called? Yeah, is no, it, it's, it, it, it was in Kempton. They had like three of them, but now they're working into other yeah. restaurants. They don't own their own anymore. So um, it, it was called Pizzeria Sorrento. And uh, yeah, my mm -hmm. mother and my dad, they surely can cook like <laughs> very, 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 very well. <laughs> now, yeah. did, did this cooking get passed down to you? 
Uh, yeah, in some points it did, for some parts. Uh, I need to say, like, my brother always uh, was it like um, in the inside kitchen helping up my mom. And I was like outside with my dad at the bar and I was like, you know, with the clients and stuff. Oh. But still, I learned a lot of things um, also from the cooking side. And I'm still like keep on asking my mother every now and then about some recipes that I forgot about. So <laughs> and she helps. Nice. She's glad to help me out every time again. That's, nice. <laughs> That's cool. We're yeah. going to have a cooking yeah, party next time we meet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're Let's make Sounds amazing. Oh, okay. I'll ask another and then, go and ahead, then you can jump in. Um, oh, okay. All right, cool. Uh, no, go, yeah, please. So I, I, I ask about background because I, I all the questions that I'm asking, yeah. I ask because I feel like it feeds into the music somehow. Mm-hmm. And especially as a producer, um, you know, b- b- before I get into any of that, like as a child, w- w- um did you come up like learning instruments? Like, are you an instrument guy? Or are you a singer? Or are you somebody who like was, you were more of a video game person that, that that always was humming a song? Or what's your story as far as like how, your introduction to the music? Um, well, not at all. Unfortunately, I was uh, never thought some instrument when I was younger. I did it later on, but I was a very big computer guy. Like, let's let's call it kind of nerdish, mm-hmm. to be honest. Uh, I learned programming when I was very young, and so it was, was like my very first touch to computers. And then eventually, I got into some software. You know, back in the day that I had like from some money that I saved up from you know getting from my parents, and then I saw like this. CD at some media market shit and you know it was just like a DAW where you could make some random loop beats and stuff I think it was the Magic Hip Hop Maker 3 or something I don't know it's like 10 bucks and um, so I bought it and um, that was like my very first introduction to making music um, actually like working with beats but then I eventually changed to you know a lot of other programs, Fruity Loops and um, Cubase and App Reason and and even Logic at some point. So you so went I was from always... wait, but you went from that CD thing to Fruity Loops. Um, yeah, quite quite soon, oh. yeah, and then to to Propellerheads Reason after that, and then to Cubase and yeah. Oh, okay. um, I, I, I guess like you know I was a very digital guy. I got like an MPC oh. when I was younger, and so I tried like you know making grooves on it. How old were you um, when you got your first MPC? Um, I was probably like 18 or something, 19. Okay. Yeah, I was still in apprenticeship. Did you buy it or, and, or did, did you get it as a gift? No, I, 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 bought, I bought it. I saved the, the money for my apprenticeship loan that I got, you know, back then. And um, yeah, oh, it was so like, cool. I don't know, was it like one thing? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah. He grew up Yeah, I mean, it. <laughs> it's, it's a super nice instrument or like sampler yeah, uh, more. But um, Are we talking was floppy disks? Yes, it was actually with, with floppy disks. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, that's back in the day. I mean, wow. it's very likely. <laughs> I mean, YouTube wasn't even there. You know, you could not even like check out for some tutorials or shit. So I, yes, MySpace was a MySpace thing. Was exactly, a thing, exactly. Yeah. So I needed to learn everything myself, and I just did it by you know um, just doing it, trying out, experimenting, and so very much on the computer though. So instruments came on later when I was like 25, 26. So that's not that much later. What's the first instru- instrument that you learned? Uh, the piano. The piano. Okay. Yeah. Was it because With, of like uh, MIDI uh, keyboard situation or, or yeah, did I you mean, take lessons? Yeah, I mean, sure. Sure. No, no, no. Um, I had like a MIDI keyboard straight from the beginning, but really like understanding it, having lessons, I started with uh, 25, 26. And then eventually I got deeper when I was like 29. Mm. So, um, and I'm learning the guitar right now, recently, like more and more. Are you doing an acoustic so, guitar or electric? Uh, the ac- acoustic, acoustic guitar. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I really love it. It's, yes, I really, really love it. Welcome I like it. I um, always loved that instrument, but for some reason, you know, my fingers are like so fucking big and everything hurts when I'm like... So actually, I got me like a special guitar with some, you know, um, smoother... Um, um, Edges. Yes, strings on it. Exactly. Sorry. Yeah. Are you playing bass Strings. at all? Bass guitar? No, my father did though when he was younger. And I'm like, I need to say, I'm a very much I'm like a big fan of bass lines in general. I, and I've like, heard. Yeah, when, a track, in your music. when a track has like a nice bass guitar, it guts me immediately. And and I always like bass is always like one of the last things that I put on the track because I have like the feeling it needs to, you know, round up everything yeah. and making it like tight and cozy and shit. And you're doing your and own so- mixes? 
Yes, I mix everything myself. Yeah. All right, yeah. Okay, so you're adding your bass last. Okay, now, yeah, in listening to your yeah. music, I'm wondering, like, if you're, if you're playing your stuff, if you're having people over and you're recording them, or if you're finding the samples, you know, uh, mm. in whatever way that you find your samples or make your music, maybe you're just doing it all yourself. Can, can you speak to your process? Um. It's it's mostly starting with um, nowadays, like that I got more into keys and production, uh, like um, music theory. Um, it always starts with a certain um, ground base of melody, mm -hmm. you know, like moody stuff or whatever, or just like a small melody line or a lick or something. And then I basically just build around it. And, you know, eventually it grows and it grows and it grows. What I did before, like when I was younger, I sampled like way more. Um, but it was funny though, because I started with a small sample from, I don't know, could be a record, could be from a sample bank, could be from whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I like build up everything around it still like I do today. And at the very last step, I just muted the very first sample and then like the rest was just original. And, um, I just, you know, mixed it down very low sometimes or just kept it out at all. If it worked. That's smart. And That's so how you, you know, you make your money, you know, I mean, cause you, you know, you have original music that way. Uh, yeah i mean i need to say that i you know ever since i have like a um a publisher and like people who you know care about that music in a way that you know royalties get in and in the, in the right way and everything um you need to you know basically uh be careful with that uh, but i never was the guy that you know released like tracks with fully original uh, fully like stuff in it that is not from myself mm -hmm. so I just kept that for SoundCloud for like some free downloads and, and stuff or like edits and mixes yeah so wow so, so, yeah. so you were so you did did you jump on SoundCloud whenever it first came on or, or did you wait like oh um, no I'm on SoundCloud for quite some time now mm -hmm. actually I need to you know what that's interesting I never checked like how long I have that account let me check that quickly Because cause Gene and I, we always have that, um, really? we always talk about how people produce and how unique each style is. Mm -hmm. I, I guess every pers person out there produces music differently. And um, mm -hmm. we talked about different platforms as well, also in the past on the show. Mm -hmm. And f me, for example, I'm a huge SoundCloud user. I don't, I use Spotify basically just to listen to some like pop music whenever I feel like mm -hmm. it and, and maybe some um audio books or stuff like that but other than that I'm more into SoundCloud because especially it has a lot of original music from the artists that um, put it out there um, yeah. and it's really sometimes it's, it's still really underground and really under yeah. the radar and yeah. that's where I do there's a the lot of good stuff there for sure like a lot of my taste stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So, so it seems like I'm on SoundCloud since dude, I mean I started. Yeah, I mean I cannot really check because I don't find it. But the first time I really needed to pay uh, the pro account, where it was like still thirty five bucks, it was the fifth of May two thousand fifteen. But I'm sure I used it a couple of years what? even before um, because I had like a free account for a very long time. So I think I got on SoundCloud around two thousand thirteen, fourteen, something like that. I remember the early um, meetings. I'm from Pittsburgh, and, and we the, when SoundCloud first came out, mm. they had ambassadors to to SoundCloud who were like, they would have roundups at bars, and they would tell people, mm. "Hey, come in, and um, we're going to tell you about this new app, SoundCloud." And uh, people were really taking advantage of it, and I, I wanted to, but I don't know. Mm. I just mm. didn't. I wasn't really. That, that yeah, still there. Their app. No, I'm sorry. What? You, you, so you're, Gene, you're, you're not on SoundCloud at all? Or? Not while well, I was, and then I got off, and then I went back, <laughs> and then I got off again, and then I went back, and then I got off again. Mine? Oh, no. Gene, did you? Yeah, your connection is a little weak. Yeah, I, I answered. <laughs> Luca just asked um, you if you are on SoundCloud. No, I said... <laughs> I can hear myself. I didn't hear myself. Are you so you aren't on SoundCloud at all? Gene? I'm not on SoundCloud now. No. You're no, not? because I just felt no, like it got no. in the way. I was trying to build up my um my. I was can you hear me? 
Oh, yeah, but I, I don't. I, I was trying to yeah, yeah, yeah. send but everybody I think you're, over you're to my Bandcamp account well, and why. my Spotify. <laughs> so I said I have to get rid of SoundCloud because it's getting in the way. It's <laughs> people can hear my music for free whenever I'm trying to get them to pay for it. So I don't know how to go about it anymore. I think I might just have to get Sound, SoundCloud again and start yes, up yeah. and just put all of my music out there and. And and then I need to get a manager, someone who can manage my SoundCloud account, so I can, so that way people could actually hear my music. And you guys can hear me okay mm. now. Yes, it's getting better, getting better again. It's yeah. Terrible. Yeah. So, yeah, but I but I need to say I don't I spend too much time on SoundCloud. To be very honest, like I I put stuff up there and then I you know I log out and then I'm like back on it a week later. Or two weeks later, I don't know. I found like my music in different ways, uh, especially Bandcamp as well, or um, you know, some some playlists I follow or, or have, um, and promos that I get, you know, obviously. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think I, th I think SoundCloud is also um, really interesting, rather for um, electronic um, music, and I think that's why maybe it's not the ideal platform for Gene, um, because you're more of a, as you always say, um, like like singer songwriter. What's that, what's that name you give yourself? Experimental uh, yeah, but, alternative. But, uh, I'm doing a singer songwriter the, thing. Um, I think it's different for singer songwriters. Jack, Jack of all like, trades. When I was making beats. <laughs> then I can see myself on SoundCloud all day. But mm -hmm. in writing the songs mm -hmm. and, and trying to get money for for, for the songs, mm -hmm. you know, it's, I just felt like I had to get rid of a lot of different sites and focus really on Bandcamp and Spotify. Mm -hmm. Bandcamp is amazing though. I mean, they really do a good job. They did a great job in the pandemic for the artist, you know, with like, uh, with the revenue share thing that they they split up and like, give away and yeah, really that cool. was big. Yeah, I was happy about that. Mm. Yeah. All right, Luca. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your? We talked about mm. your influences already from like your your the way of how you produce yeah. and how you got your producing. But do you have, um, let's do some name dropping, and I'm the worst person when it comes to name dropping, so I'm just going to um, soak it all up and then forget about it again, um, <laughs> as I usually do. So, But maybe still you can um, let our uh, audience know so, what kind of um, artists and what kind of genres influenced you. When I grew up, it was like the, it, it's like such a today. cheeky thing, right? But my dad had like a decent record collection of very good music like Santana, um, Bob Marley, um, also like some Italian folk. But then I eventually, for some reason, I started like listening a lot of rock music in the beginning, like The Offspring, um, uh, Papa Roach and stuff like that, um, even Limp Bizkit. And then like there was like an, um, this uh, feature of Limp Bizkit with Method Man on the Significant Other album called in together now and like this track eventually got me into the Wu-Tang Clan and yeah, then I was I like that one. You know, I was gone uh, I was like having a very very long hip-hop face from then on um, mm -hmm. so everything from West Coast hip-hop like Dr. Dre 2001 was like my album somehow and uh, everything from Kendrick Lamar recently to Shia Rashad or even you know Outkast back in the days but like recently hip-hop is having a, a you know a new impact to me again with all these new albums by a lot of great artists like nas released nice stuff little sims i don't know shia rashad like i said and it's it's just crazy good music coming out in the hip-hop sector but i had like a very big love for all kind of jazz blues funkish kind of mix between electronic and everything of that you know so TV Recuperation was a very big thing for me, as well as Ralph Myers and the Jack Heron Band. Um, mm -hmm. And then I got more into, you know, jazz things like the classic Herbie Hancock and John Coltrane and stuff. Um, yeah. And then blues music is a very big thing for me, too. Like, honestly, um, when I feel bad, I just put on a blues record and I feel like, you know, 
so understood from by by the music itself, and it, it's just like amazing feeling. That comes are you out. listen as far as blues? Um, is this like American blues, yeah. or is there are there are they doing blues in different places too? Um, yeah, no. Um, I like the Delta blues to be honest. Like just a man and a guitar, acoustic, and that's it. You know, like Otis Taylor is doing a very great job with that. Um, um, you know, with everything from Eric Bibb to I don't know, Howling Wolf and stuff. So Definitely, this kind yeah. of blues, the real blues, somehow, at least for me, it is it's a lot of knowledge, <laughs> and it's interesting to, to hear your to. to, to... <laughs> to 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 hear your story, so I can see your path and, and how so you basically ended up in certain place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's keep on digging. Let's keep on digging. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, <laughs> so basically, your um your hip hop uh youth let's say and and your your way of just um yeah. listening to to different styles um was fused mm. at a certain point with electronic beats and i, I just I, I just went for a walk uh, an hour ago and mm -hmm. uh, i would like double or recheck uh, on one of your latest um um singles and what i what i realized is that you have a very um <clears throat> unique way of putting smooth down tempo uh groovy kind of vibes into a dancey atmosphere like it's it's like this amazing mixture of yeah i could sit down smoke a blunt or but then again i could also or get up and just dance <laughs> for the rest of the night uh which is a yeah which is an amazing um combination yeah or doing both definitely um that works just fine as well but when did the um electronic part come in and um as i understand that's especially the part that you produce yourself um, um the wow i mean the i think pretty um, much a couple of years after i started djing happen? because i actually started djing with hip-hop music but then i got into some mixtapes from some techno friends of mine you know who like mm -hmm. were techno djs back at the time and there was the specific mix of a friend who was like mixing, I don't know, 80s kind of vocalish um, tracks with, with house music in a very nice way. And so that what got me into electronic music in the first place. Uh, but then everything was like so fast in you know, terms of electronic, because like everything was like 125, 130 BPM, which for some people is still very slow, you know, but for me, it's like super fast. And... Um, I then just tried to, you know, when I started my solo project, I, I needed some some kind of blueprint for myself, like something yeah. that I want to add to the to the whole thing of, of my music, let's say, because I like, you know, did so many different things. And then the answer was obviously just given by the BPM, because everything I did was just like I kept on making electronic beats, but I just slowed them down intensely, like to 100 BPM or something. And then all of a sudden it became this mixture of hip hop tempo because 100 BPM, like 95, 90 to 100 is pretty yeah. much a very hip hopish tempo. Uh, and these electronic things, you know, blending together and, and making a very cool mixture of stuff that I, back to the time, didn't, didn't really hear before. And so I was super happy to, you know, have something that I, you know, just experimented with. And um, yeah, I just kept on doing it. And I'm still liking the tempo. Even though that I changed some time here and there, but um, I basically like it slower. Yeah, def <laughs> yeah, same here. I'm, uh, I'm usually like either it's like ninety six BPM or it's like one hundred and twenty four. <laughs> it's like my my comfort range, um, and I think you hit that one pretty well. Um, so let me or let's talk about your life acts that are actually happening right now of course last year uh, with gene and me the pandemic mm. obviously was a was a subject that we talked about uh i have my own little life mm. um concert show here in cologne um where i try to fuse uh, live music with mm. dj sets uh and stuff like that and obviously we couldn't and gene is part of the team nice. as well he's like the the um 
resident mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, hip-hop DJ um, who's taking care of the atmosphere too. So obviously we couldn't do any shows. Now we have a, a mm -hmm. release or we have a one event uh, this year in December. I'm really happy and stoked about it. So this is a little promo for this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but how did you... Uh, I saw on social media that slowly but steady you're picking up on your life gigs and your life performances mm, again. Yeah. How did you? Um, They've been a yeah, hell of a ride, like for the all last of us. 15, 18 Definitely. Months, um, what's it's your? It's been outlook? a very intense time. A lot of things <laughs> so happened far. also in my personal life, but um, you know, as far as everything yeah. gets back now, I mean, I just tried to to make the best out of it. I produced that album, um, which is coming now in October and um, everything was just like in the first place I was happy to not be like extensively touring because it was just a nice stop to have for a couple of weeks but then the longer it got and um, the more I realized okay this seems like to keep on just yeah. going and going and going and let's see um, I just tried to deal with the situation because there is nothing that we can do about it. We just need to wait and uh, do our part and our best to, you know, stop spreading this virus. And so um, I just kept it cool and I just, I was just in the studio most of the time. But I was very privileged because I, you know, I got some, some, some stable funds and stuff. So I was happy with it and I could just do my thing without thinking too much about what's what's going to be tomorrow, you know, and that was a very big help. Yeah, that was a very big help. And I'm very glad and privileged to have, you know, had this opportunity. So, um, but now, as you know, as That's I said, it's, it's, it's slowly coming back, but it's, it's different than before, you know, it's a very, um, I have the feeling a very spontaneous thing, because, you know, um, uh, regulations are changing on a weekly basis. And so do bookings as well. And, uh, confirmed shows and so it's it's changing a lot in the recent weeks so but I, but i'm actually happy to be back again um and to be touring and to play my my records which i dropped last year um also to audiences because i didn't really have the opportunity to do it um and so i was super happy last weekend that i could play like some tunes in romania that i never played before for people um so yeah blessed times let's hope for the best. <laughs> Um, the latest EP, uh, yeah. well, actually, the um, I, I have like a, What's, a couple uh, of singles your, uh, which we dropped um, ever since I uh, think June now. So um, they are all anticipating my album, which is called Nice Place, Bad Intentions, and it's coming the 29th of October on double vinyl as well. Mm -hmm. So um, on Finest Here, a Cologne based label. So cheers uh, to Col California mm -hmm. love. Exactly, exactly. Shout out to the guys. And actually also to Amon, where we met for the first time at his party, right? Shout um, out to yeah, Philip, um, <laughs> our homie. That is like my thing right now, and I'm fully focusing on that. And we have like a new single coming actually tomorrow on the 17th Absolutely. of September um, yeah. called City of Grind. This is like the newest one. And I will also have like a, a music video for this one and for the next and final one, which is coming the middle of October. <clears throat> so yeah, some... Interesting times ahead. So we that. we played re real name yes. no gimmicks on the on the yeah, radio show. True. Um, mm -hmm. So did you get mm -hmm. that from the Ob Trice opening? Stuff is happening. Of, um, the <laughs> true. Music? Yeah, I, I did. See, I did. I freaking did. I had that from the. But that line, I actually, I actually got that line from the very beginning when I started my solo project because I. I you know, there was like a time where I, I had like problems with finding good artist names for me or like, you know, whatever names that you can call yourself, cool yeah. things and stuff. And uh, I don't know, I had some people around me saying like, hey, man, you have like a cool name. Just keep your own name, your real name. And I was always flashed by that line of, of Obi Trice and that record. Yeah. And so this that got me too. gimmicks. I had like I ended up, I, I used my yeah. name, Gene Stovall. Yeah. My birth name is Eugene Stovall, but I, I used okay. Gene Stovall because yeah. of that shit with the Obi Trice opening. And I was like, yeah, I should do that. It's my real okay. name, man. I'm no gimmicks. This is just who I am or whatever. But I changed it from Gino. Like I was Gino Jive. Like that was, that was, my, <laughs> that was my stage name. 
And now I just want to be Gino again, man. I just feel like now Gene Stovall is my stage name, and and the real guy is Gino. So like now I'm Gino. I am. Gene Stovall is like now he's a singer, but he's definitely like a guy that's for higher and then like but i'm like the real genius yeah. so, no, i get that whole thing i had to ask that question no, i knew confused. i was just like man when i read that i was like real name yeah, give it. Sure. i wonder if he's i wonder if he was a fan of that music video the way that i was you're actually right yeah no no you're actually right and i am a fan of that specific record but i also need to say that when you will hear the album uh it will make sense because the introduction <laughs> um will like end up with something that has to do with that statement and so I was very happy that I could use it finally in a track because I was waiting for years to use it, but I always kept it like, you know, for a special uh, yeah. opportunity. And so, um, so ha yeah. Um, good, good, Celine. Hmm. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay, so I, I, I have to talk about one Keep of my rolling. favorite tracks That's, of 2021. Yeah. Luca probably already knows which one. Whoa. Cheers. Okay, Keep, yeah, cool. Keep yeah. rolling. That's nice. Thanks. I swear, I swear to God, if, if this track was listened it's to 20,000 times online, I, mean, I listened to it at least 8,000 <laughs> times. So it's... Yeah. <laughs> I... Yeah, I definitely... Oh, uh, twin, yeah. Twin, <laughs> Hopefully, I hope so. No, literally, like, I would catch myself rapping in the middle of the fucking stream with my headphones on and just not giving a shit because I just, um, yeah, it's one of no, Sunil, my... Thanks a lot. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. I, and I rarely say this uh, because I listen to a lot of music and a lot of different artists and styles, but this About is this track? seriously yeah. one of my favorites um, of this year. So, so, this record came out um, well, this year thank you. Uh, via Mood um, Family from... And now uh, I want to know from, everything uh, about from it. <laughs> Belgium, from a very close friend, Stavros. Yes, um, and please hit me. Actually, I made this track, I think, in the mid of... I guess 2019 or something and I played it out for quite a while and uh, when I was still touring and um, you know when I was like f finishing it getting the details done and everything I had like this upcoming show with Stavros in, in Istanbul which then happened to be my very last show before the pandemic hit so um, they were selling out this very bigger the, the Volkswagen Arena in Istanbul it was like a crazy gig and I played this record and uh, Isprand heard it because I also showed it to him before in the backstage, but then he heard it on the big system and it was actually, you know, mixed pretty nice. I hit some kind of sweet spot with that track. Um, and after the show, he came to me and he was like uh, telling me that he needs that, that track. We need to release it. And so I just sent him some demos and a couple of weeks later, we decided that, um, yeah, we're going to drop it on Mood Family. And uh, yes, that's pretty much the story of it. I mean... It was fun because, you know, Mood Family is like a label that I always wanted to be a part of, you know, um, because I know Star Wars for a very long time and I really like the guys. And for me, they're one of the best electronic life acts around. That's so, um, yeah, I'm happy it worked out. Also with that awesome, um, mostly Junior remix and Xenobi as well. So it was a good start into this strange year. But yeah, so far, <laughs> it's been amazing. Which which sound? Keep rolling, rolling, yeah. rolling. Who's that? Who's that? Oh, no, I'm just Sorry, I'm just uh, who's that sample it's, from? Like I never actually researched. It's actually, it all my vocals, just, Celine. I'm lazy when it comes to the keep rolling yeah, vocals. Yeah, but uh, if you mean the specific um, guy who is like saying something at no, the end, not like, like that, um, but um, <laughs> because there's like another voice message in there saying For cheering real? at me, you know, and that's like Joe, uh, a friend of mine from from Seattle, Joe. <laughs> yeah cheers to joe b in seattle who's like making tremolent parties uh, shout out to him because he made like some specific lines okay, so in there I'm but the main rap guys, and vocal okay, parts is, is for sure from, from, from my yeah from my voice <laughs> I, I i just thought you i don't know man you were talking about limp biscuit yeah. and i was just like oh yeah keep rolling so i know that's yeah 
That's so cool. Um, Yeah, true. I mean, it's it's a very close uh, connection. You're damn right. I mean, right, all of all of my should, all of my stuff that I'm putting out recently you, has like you, just my no, own I don't think that I have. I mean, but it's, it's interesting oh, man, that, it's that just, people still think that I'm sampling yeah, it. Yeah, I'm just. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Speechless. No way, no way. I got asked a couple of times. That's why it's like funny to me now. But it's it's but my it's own vocals. Cool. Yeah, for sure. I thought so. I thought it was like an um, I will with my music like video. You will see me rapping kind of pretty much. That's what these interviews so, are all about too. You it's going to happen. That's why we do it. So we can ask the questions. Yeah. 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 Maybe you should stress yeah. that, that a little work. more. <laughs> yeah. Good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Thanks. I can't wait yeah, for you guys to hear the album those, those because I rap like actually um, a lot on that album. I even have some nobody tracks really on that knows album, about, which so, are not yeah, electronic definitely. at all. So well, Luka, then again, still, like my biggest respect. Still like me. Do you I'm have after, just happy you when did you that make one. your music? <laughs> is it seasonal? Like, are you affected by the seasons? And and do you cool. like to present based on what when a se like based on the timing of uh, the the season? Who cares? Time of season. I'm a, um, well, let me put it this way. When it's like, when the sun is shining and like, it's a beautiful day, I certainly make different music than when it's like raining, you know, but I'm not that seasonal guy, I would say, even though for me, like all the years before winter has been pretty much the time where I produced. And then I was like on tour the rest of the year. Sorry. So I'm um, pretty much. I was used to do music in the winter time, um, but now like it changed because last year I was like just in the studio basically all year and all types of shit evolved and came out. So, um, but yeah, the, it, I'm, I'm more a weather guy, I would say, but maybe that's even like a bit connected to season because like, you know, in winter there's not too much sun and stuff. So I would say a yes and no, not particularly too much what season, but more like to weather. Okay. And then the other question is, yeah. can you, perform for us your most rehearsed like verse or, or your favorite verse most impressive verse yeah that you have of mine I mean, oh um <laughs> <laughs> it might be on the city of grind um track which is coming now um um, well, I want to insert like, a drum roll. That is. Questions. I need to look out. <laughs> no, I'm just, I don't I'm have just the lyrics going. in mind right now, but I have them <laughs> written down right here. So give me a second. <laughs> we gotta cut this. We we, we gotta cut this, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're not cutting it off. This shit is real, dude. People yeah. want real life, or well, at least what we want real nope. life. Yeah. <laughs> this because yeah. no. it's come to my attention no, that's a fun part about our show okay. we, we barely or cool. we, we don't edit a lot everything comes just right in we want un unfiltered uncensored <laughs> um, so I would say it's yeah, like actually, the one it's actually dedicated the egos upon their heads. Their we, dedicate, we dedicated people seen as threats. There's no legal steps, but some furious slaps producing <laughs> claps till the club collapse. <laughs> that was the most, the most rehearsal one that I had. Yeah. Um, and this is like, yeah, inside the, the latest single, which is coming. So I'm very excited to see is what this, people This for the video is dropping tomorrow? You know, nice having, one. There will be a little reel which will drop tomorrow, but it's not the actual music video. We um, the music video is still in editing, so um, we just shot it a few weeks ago, um, okay. and so it's still in production. But we'll have some, you know, some small snippets um, Did out you of use it a drone coming for the music tomorrow. Video? Yeah. Drones? No, no drones at all. But we actually had a crane. We can man. do better than so, drones. <laughs> I mean, it was even better. 
it was even better yeah you had to see like the director's eyes when he saw like the first shots of oh, the beautiful yes. car that we rent for that and so he was having that crane and the perfect sweet spot and he was just going crazy his eyes wow. just turned out to be like hearts and he was like all positive and just love in him he just loved it and was such good energy so i'm very excited and looking oh, okay. forward to, so you, to up, see everything it, was positive actually it was really good even though we had like some rain but it actually <laughs> even matched up to stop raining when we needed to shoot it was just like you know god given somehow it was really amazing really amazing yeah yeah same yeah yeah oh perfect <laughs> And you know, Luca, you just said we'll see how the how the um, collective or how the uh, you know f fans uh, yeah. Um, yeah. like it or don't. Um, yeah, I think w what's mm -hmm. most important is even though maybe if some people don't appreciate it because it's not their style, I think there's going to be a lot of other new people yeah. that are going to you know. So maybe it sounded a bit more worried just, that I meant like, it. Who? You know, wow, who's that it's guy? Like, and, um, an album for me is like I'm super excited such for an expression of various um, styles that an artist these, has so new in, it, people and, in him and or her. You know, vibes, so um, I really wanted to show this. diverse facets of myself and 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 just parts and, and <laughs> see what you know, you know what it just brings to 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 the paper at some point. And so um, I'm just interested. In, you know, I'm always interested in seeing how people react to it if they like it. Because it's just like part of, of the whole thing. But I'm not necessarily doing it for people liking it like mostly or stuff or whatever. It's just some kind of, you know, interest that drives me. So and I'm excited to to drop it. And obviously it's it's also a bit, you know, it has a story in it which which could, you know, honestly like speaking, um, it could be a bit harsh for people. It could maybe no. even yeah, you know fuck up people a bit. Um but that's funny. That's intended. So it's Yeah, you you wrote about that. Like, if you feel, um, how did you? Okay, hold on. Let me find that sentence because that really actually made me made me <laughs> smile. Um, there is a saying um, in German that basically flips that sentence around, which uh, is a sentence that I sometimes use yeah. uh, in German. It's uh, uh, it's. Und wenn du es nicht verstanden hast, dann hast du es nicht verstehen sollen. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Jean. So it means basically, if if you didn't get it, that was probably why you didn't get it, or that's probably because you weren't supposed to get it. And um, and you basically wrote that down in your in your um, introduction of the new album, and you said, um, "Hold on, the narrative concept of this record is mostly inspired by real events." and is considered to deal with topics like superficiality, club culture, and being human in a critical way. Who feels addressed maybe is addressed. <laughs> it's like, yes. That's yeah. what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a lot about, um, you know, just confronting yourself with yourself pretty much and to not run mm -hmm. away from And so it, it means, I mean, I hope in the end that when people hear the album, they, they just, you know, grab something for them out of it and have like yeah. maybe a different setup in the end in their minds. But I don't know, maybe that happened, maybe not. It's not me to decide anyway. Um, but I'm happy that everything inside that record makes so much sense for me in this concept and in this whole, you know, even time that we are right now. Um, so it feels very right to drop it this way. <laughs> 